um, Apostle Arome Osai, please. Hallelujah. We're so expectant. I encourage you, press in, open your heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Naomi. Amen. Once again, thank you, Pastor Wade, for the opportunity to stand out here this morning. I believe uh, that the Lord adjusted the weather so that we can be focused to receive what God is offering us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning and we ask for your help. Uh, make for yourself a great name and be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There, there, there was a brother that was on this keyboard a few minutes ago. I don't know if it, he, he has left. Yes, to help my navigation, we, we might need to uh, get that brother back. All right. So just give me strings and uh, provide some support. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. First Peter... Amen. Thank you. Start now? Yeah. yeah, please. First Peter chapter 1. Beginning from verse number 9. Receiving the end of your faith from the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Jesus Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them which preach the, preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into we're, we're still on um, our subject the gifts from heaven we saw the name of Jesus a name given among men and we saw its efficacy. We also did a little practical to show that there's nothing wrong with the name of Jesus even today. And now we want to look at another gift that has been given unto us from heaven. Uh, the Bible says, concerning the salvation that we have, concerning the experiences that grace has made available, that we enjoy today. The Bible says that the prophets of the Old Testament prophesied about today. And they gave insight into the details of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. It's as if the suffering of Jesus was accumulating currency in the realm of the spirit, such currency that they can tap into through faith, and then the glory of all that he suffered will begin to find expression in our lives. The prophets had diligently inquired of the Lord, seeking to understand the things that they prophesied. But God did not allow them access into the understanding. The only thing that God said to them was that they were prophesying about us about a yonder generation. Now, you see, the interesting thing is we are in the reality of the things that the prophets prophesied and desired to look into, and they were not granted the opportunity. We are, we are in the reality of things that angels desired to understand, and it was kept from the reach of the understanding of angels. And that's what we have now. And it doesn't look like what we have is really great because 
we are still very normal people. But when I read the book of Acts of the Apostles, the, 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 the um, functionaries of the kingdom of God were not normal people. And the reason why there's any book in the Bible called the Acts of the Apostles is because the apostles acted under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so if we are normal people, we will lack what it takes to change the environment. Meanwhile, our dispensation was seen by the prophets of old that desired it. Angels desired to even have a glimpse, to even understand that which God has ordained for us to walk in. But you see, the expression of what we have, which was prophesied, is not exactly in the full scope of the glory as God intended. And the reason is because there is a personality that is sent down from heaven that we have not yet known. His name is the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the people that reported the gospel, the people that preached the gospel, they preached under the influence, they preached above witness by the accompaniment of a person even the Holy Ghost. So it means that in this dispensation, if we are fully going to maximize that which the prophets saw about our age, we must be introduced afresh to the person of the Holy Spirit. I don't know your story, but I know mine. Meanwhile, we went for Bible school training, theological training, all those trainings. But all those trainings that we went for never helped me know the Holy Ghost. Because your adventure into the Holy Spirit, your adventure into the world of the Holy Ghost is going to be personal. It's not something that uh, some form of Bible education can give you. It's something that you are going to venture in. You are going to trust the Holy Spirit to walk with him. And, and that is a function, not of your head, but of your heart. You know, it's, it's easy for us to cram formulas, to cram patterns, to operate by something that is logical. But if you are going to walk with the Holy Ghost, you, you can't walk with your mind. You walk with your heart. And the Bible says, that the people that preach the gospel. Can we do um, verse, uh, verse 12? Verse 12 is my emphasis. It says, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us that did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. They preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things angels desire to look into. Now the emphasis is the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And it will interest you to know that in the entire Bible, it's, it's only rendered that way in this verse of scripture. The Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. So your partnership and your walk with the Holy Spirit is going to do a lot to your life. Because he brings the perspective of heaven. He's sent down from heaven, so he brings the perspective of heaven. And if you care to consult him, he will bring heaven's perspective, heaven's estimation, heaven's evaluation of things with the hope that you will walk with his own perspective. And the, the more you begin to walk with his perspective, the more you become aligned with what heaven wants to do. His ways are not our ways. Hallelujah. Once upon a time, I, someone did something wrong to me. And I had every justification. I could, I could go to court and present the case. And I had all the details to prove that the person was wrong. But while I communed with the Holy Ghost one, one of those days, he requested that I should go apologize to someone that was obviously wrong. The reason why his own perspective is different is because he brings the perspective of heaven. And it's quite humbling when God challenges us 
with the perspective of heaven. That's when we realize, most of us realize, that we, we really don't want heaven's perspective. We like running our things based on um, our understanding. But God, if we are going to go far with God and make impact in our lifetime, it is because we are humble enough to accept the perspective of him that comes from heaven. In walking with the Holy Spirit, you need to give up a lot of your ways, your style, your approach, if you are going to grow in the things of God. Because he acquaints you with the present revelation position of, of God's mind. And you will find all things will become new to you because you are willing to walk with him. Your life becomes stuck. It becomes a routine. Sometimes it becomes so bored when you refuse to sign up with the Holy Spirit. If you do, you will find so much excitement in him, much more excitement in him than the league. you find much more excitement in him than anything that is around your life. It brings you into the perspective of heaven. I'd like to show us one more scripture. As we look on this scripture, with greater detail, it will give us a little understanding which is my desire that um, we, tap, we tap into this understanding that I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Many times I had sustained a perspective until the Holy Spirit now comes and he brings heaven's perspective. As logical, as, as brilliant as my perspective was, I see the futility of my ways when I compare it with his ways. And that becomes an invitation for me to forsake my way in order to admit and to embrace his way. As long as we keep embracing his way, we begin to embrace the perspective of heaven. It's easy for us to operate within the scope of the nation of our nationality, which happens to be heaven. My question to you this morning is, will you allow the Holy Ghost to bring the perspective of heaven into your space? Or you are so sh shut up in your ways and you believe it's just good for you. Remember that prophets of old desired to peep into the economy, into the details of that which will come in the time of the regime of the Holy Ghost. And they were denied access. Angels sought to understand it. Many times when I look at this scripture and I compare my life with this scripture, I know that I'm not where God wants me to be. I have not yet touched what those prophets, because those prophets moved with God. They walked with God. But there was something they saw that they desired to know. And the reality of these things were kept from them. When I sit back and I think, does my life look like something that, that is a marvel to angels? Is my walk with God something that will be a marvel to prophets like Elijah? A marvel. And there's a technology in the Spirit of God that I found that they, they know nothing about. When I come in that dimension, I'm a marvel to Elijah. I, I try to evaluate my life using the eyes of Scripture. That when I, when I, there, there are dimensions of God that I manifest that angels will marvel. Okay, this is part of the script that was kept from us. He's walking in it. We don't know that thing. We don't know that dimension. We know it exists, but we, we've been denied access. Now we, we, we can understand it because he, he is walking in it. Can I really say that of myself? Or my concept of the work with God is 
based on what I have received by experience. I, I know by experience. I read in books. The Holy Ghost is more than books. There is a desire I have. And before my time is up in this pilgrimage, I will explore those things that angels do not know. I use this scripture to challenge myself every day. That where I am doesn't look. It doesn't look like that place. That will be a marvel to the angels. Come with me. Let's go to the book of um, Psalms. Psalms. Uh, One hundred and ten. Psalms one hundred and ten. We'll begin from verse number one. Uh, the technical man, if you can, you might, you may want to help me with that scripture on the screen. David is given. A prophetic insight into kingdom discussions. He is given access to the throne room, and there were several kingdom things that were being discussed in the throne room, and he was given the privilege to see it through the Holy Ghost. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. This is the Father speaking to the Son. If you look at the shape of the scripture, it is suggestive of the time when Jesus had fulfilled the claims of divine justice on the cross and had returned into the heavenlies. And now the father is about to assign him to a new ministry in the heavenlies. And that's what the seat is about. But this ministry, if you see, you know, the phrase, at my right hand. The right hand in this context is not geography, it's not this side. It means administration. So Jesus was assigned a place of administration. There were many things in the kingdom of God that he would sit over to administer. It was the place of administration that he was being ushered into. And then the father now makes a promise to him. He says, you sit in administrative capacity. It will be my responsibility to, to bring your enemies and make them bow at your feet. He had Opened the gate to salvation. Grace was now available. So our faith will appropriate what grace was bringing. So that it can become our possession. Even salvation. He said the organic pathway has been opened. Now you can sit in the place of administration. It will be my responsibility to bring all your enemies at your feet. The first question we need to ask in this arrangement is. How does the Father intend to bring the enemies of Christ to his feet? Then the second verse comes, comes to the rescue. Verse 2. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of your strength from Zion. It is in keeping with the promise that the Father made to the Son that the Bible is saying the rod of God's strength, which is the Holy Spirit, will have to leave Zion, God's administrative headquarters, to come into the earth. I'm still talking about the Holy Ghost sent down. From where? Because he made a promise to the Son, he's now revealing to us how he intends to bring that promise to pass. This is what occasioned the Holy Ghost to be sent from heaven. So that the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of heaven, out of Zion. 
And the Holy Spirit was sent into the earth with a heavenly policy. There was a policy that backed his dispatch. The policy that backed his dispatch, because, are you still with me? You know, normally when I notice you are not with me, I cut part of the message. It means you need to journey with God to find it. It will not be available in the conference. So are you with me now? <laughs> he said, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. And the Holy Spirit that was coming out of Zion to become a key player in the administration of the purposes of God upon the face of the earth, he was coming with a mandate. And the mandate, I would like us to analyze for a while. The mandate is rulership. It's a rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. That's the mandate. So he's coming to rule. You remember that Adam had a dominion mandate. Okay, you yeah, are not with me. So, you don't remember that. You don't remember that. You know, like I said, at any point in time, I notice that you are not here. We'll just assume that you know what I want to say and then we'll continue. This is the second level in the dominion mandate. The, there is a dominion mandate that is a, a Adamic. Are you there? In the book of Genesis? There is a dimension of dominion that is Adamic. And the Adam that was given that dominion was not saved, did not have the life of God. He was innocent, but he was not righteous. And that's why the fallen man ha has a level, there's an entry point of dominion that the fallen man can actually carry. And so if you go to, you, I've seen your engineering feats in the different cities of the United Kingdom. The guys that conceive and implement those mighty structures are not necessarily from the kingdom of God, but they are manifesting dominion. Because the level of their dominion, of the dominion they manifest is on the Adamic level. There's a more superior dimension of dominion that has been discussed in this throne room arena that David saw. Are you, are you here? And that's what I want to talk, talk, talk about. Because he's coming with this mandate. That means we have access to a more superior dominion implementation program. This is part of the arrangement that the angels were not allowed to see. And you are the only theater that is supposed to reveal these dimensions and if by any means your life falls short of unveiling these possibilities it means you did not fulfill the errand of the glory of god that was upon your life the glory of god was sent on errand through your heart and your alignment with the holy spirit to learn his ways and to allow him be on the stage of your life is what is going to determine the release of this dimension of glory. I'm just trying to use a few scriptures to show you several things that are, uh, accompanied the coming of the Holy Spirit into the earth. And then I want us to be very sincere to evaluate our lives based on the parameters that I'll be showing you to see if your life measures up. First thing I'd like you to see in this scripture is the dominion dimension that is Holy Ghost based. And the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Then he gives us a clue on how the implementation, the rulership is going to take place. Verse 3. He now says, Thy people shall be willing. Now, 
technical man. Do you have King James? I was old King James. I was trained with old King James. Uh, I appreciate your translation. But it, 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 it diminishes the, the strength of the rendering. He said, thy people shall be willing. It means that the Holy Spirit alone cannot implement that dominion. It must have, he must have partnership. Are you, are you here? Now, so the father was telling Jesus that you will have a people. And your people will be willing to partner with the Holy Ghost. It is through the lives of these your people that the dominion mandate that is trapped in the policy that released the Holy Ghost from heaven, it is through your people that this authority, this dimension of rulership, of dominion, will find expression. I'm talking about a dominion that is higher than, than, than the Adamic level. And we have seen so much of the Adamic dimension of dominion manifest in, in the continent of Europe. Creativity. I was just taking a look at the, because I build, I build, I build things. So I was taking a look at the quality of building engineering in the UK. And indeed, I'm impressed. I can, I can see the level of intellectual commitment that went into it to produce this wonder, this edifice. I, I build. Hallelujah. So this, it, 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 it's wonderful. I'm seeing all kinds of things, which is good. But the level of dominion that is designed to be manifested through the life of believers that are in partnership with the Holy Spirit is so superior, so, so, so superior. To the Adamic level that we have seen, that we see visibly around us. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. In the place of prayer, I felt the darkness that is in Cardiff. I touched it one or two times. And I, if, I, if I'm to be truthful to you, we are not the ones ruling. The power of rulership that is coming from the realm of the spirit in this vicinity is not from the cross. It means that something is ruling over us. And that is not the description of what we have in the book of Psalms 110. The question is why? Everything is measured. Everyone is afraid. We are victims of another, the rulership coming from another kingdom. I've been praying since I came. And the darkness is thick. The darkness has been here for a long time. We will not accept it on the pulpit, but we are being ruled. We are not ruled by an influence from heaven, but by darkness. And all of us have, we, we have simply measured expressions of the grace of God that work on our lives. Very, very measured. And that doesn't sound like what is what is being discussed in the throne room here. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like a bomb, the Holy Ghost, is coming to explode. And I'm going to be the agency through which that explosion is gonna is gonna take place. I, 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 I don't quite see so many explosions in yeah, in the UK since I came. It's been quiet. Everyone is nice. <laughs> Just amen. amen. That, that's what I've been saying. Now. What, what, what's happening? Oh, we are just measured. And uh, no. No. This is not what angels desire 
to look into. He said, Thy people, they shall be with in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. For a long time, I was a rural evangelist, ministering in um, rural areas in Africa. And one of those times, we went for a, we set up a crusade in a very remote place, uh, places where. There is a deity that governs the realm. And everyone has to acknowledge the influence and the immutability of this deity. And so we set up our crusade things in that locality. But it's an agrarian place. So even though you put on your posters that you are going to commence the crusade by 4 p.m., um, nobody cares when you want to start because they will go to farm to their farms finish from their farms come back there's something called yam i know you don't know yam okay sweet potato is a very cl close uh, relative to yam but they'll come back from their farms they, they pound yam I, I know you don't know what that means but, and then it, it's very heavy when you eat it you just slip up just <laughs> so they'll pound this yam and and, and eat a, a lot of it and sleep off first. So they, they will recover themselves about 7 p.m. in the evening. Meanwhile, your poster says 4 o'clock. Are you with me? So when we came for the crusade, there was nobody on the field. So the, one, the, the, the guy that came to receive us said, no, this is how they behave. They, they go to the farm. Don't worry, they're going to come. But they'll come like um, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. in the evening. I said, oh, we have too much time. What will we do with this time? Who is at home now? He said, well, one of the people that is always around is the chief priest. The one that uh, consults the spirits and communicates their will to the community. I said, okay, let's pay him a visit. The, the, the chief priest? I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the chief priest. So he, 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 was, he was supposed to be the tall guy in front, leading us. Indeed, he was in the front until we got close to the place of the, the, the house of the chief priest. I was now the one leading. Meanwhile, I wasn't going to visit the chief priest because I wanted to prove anything. I was led by the Holy Ghost. But please, let that be on record. I was what? I was led. Now, so we got to where the chief priest operates from, and he just finished sacrificing blood to the 22 altars of the people, of the, um, representing the 22 spirits that the people worship. And he was so excited because his offerings were accepted. He began to sing a song that is strange. You will need to create a different category of music to accommodate his singing. Hallelujah. So he was, he was excited. The spirits were excited. So he was singing that song. It was in that mood of great excitement that we showed up in his shrine. You know, you know what a shrine is? Okay, you don't know. Um, someone help me. Uh, Gideon, help me. What's the shrine? You know it. Okay. So he was. So we now. He now stopped. Meanwhile, when he sings like that, that's when he's most powerful. He now saw us coming. I said, Why are you people here? You know, they normally try to intimidate, you know. So I said, We come in peace. We come in the name of Jesus. Who invited you here? And I knew he was now afraid. And the reason why he was afraid was because the spirits that were dancing a while ago had fled. Oh, 
So he wanted to raise his hands again. So even though we came in peace, if you raise that hand again, we'll cause it. So look for where to hide the hand. Uh, he, he reluctantly um, brought the hand down. I never raised it again. Then the Lord spoke to me, spoke about his chest condition, that he has this infirmity on his chest and he's 13 years old. And I asked him if the gods he claimed to be seven are so powerful, why is it that they couldn't heal him of his chest pain for 13 years? Huh. So he felt, yes, okay. Have a seat. And we began to discuss. Began to discuss. And I led him to Christ. And before I led him to Christ, there were like how many old men? About nine old men that joined us in that meeting. So when I speak, my tour guide will interpret. When they speak, he will interpret. So it took so much time. I opened the scriptures and began to tell them about Jesus. Well, at the end of like how many? Two hours of discussion. They were willing to give their lives to Jesus Christ. They knelt down and I led them to the Lord and I asked them to renounce the 22 spirits. I used to remember a few of their names, but uh, I forgot. The man was a hundred years old when we had this encounter. I was 36 years old then, and that's how many, about 10 years ago or so. When, when he gave his life to Christ and renounced the altar, it was now time for the crusade. So we left his place and started heading for the crusade. The moment we got to the crusade ground, ground the people there had come for the meeting. They were excited. They were all dancing. I noticed one thing. The crippled man that was close, close to me on the right side, he stood up from his wheelchair without prayer. In fact, he was not, he was surprised that he was standing and he was not conscious of the fact that he was standing. So I, I watched him closely. He was looking at himself like this. He didn't know he was standing, but he was, his mind was trying to accept. Okay, I'm actually standing. All right, so if I'm standing, that means I need to walk. Okay. It took him 30 minutes before he took the first step. No prayer. The moment we settled it with those altars and we shut them down, the people that were kept in bondage through those altars, without prayer, they started rising up by themselves. We had three crippled people that rose up without prayer. When the witches in the realm saw that the people they had tied in their covers were now walking, they had regained their ability to walk, they ran away from the crusade ground. So we left our Bibles on the platform and ran after them. It, it, it was a very funny sight, but that was what happened. We apprehended them on a main road. And the Lord was so gracious, there was no vehicle. So the main road was the deliverance platform. We were there till 1.30 a.m. Casting out devils. Now, I'm talking about really possessed people. Are you with me? <laughs> really possessed people. By 1.30 a.m., the village was disarmed and everybody began to say the name of Jesus. The God of the village became Jesus. Thy people shall be willing. In the day of thy power. There is a dominion mandate that is locked up in the Holy Ghost. And your life is the avenue through which that 
dimension of authority is intended to be made manifest so that anywhere a believer is domiciled if you walk in the bank the grace of god in this wise is on your life and right there in the bank god can use you to do things that banking school does not teach we are too normal and at this rate, we are not going to reach the ends of the earth with the flames of God. We will need to go outside of the box and extend our prayer lives beyond what it is. When I saw this, these scriptures, I knew that the reason was for my being normal was that I was prayerless. So I drew up a prayer chart for myself for 10 hours of prayer. At least in, in one week, I should be able to pray for 10 hours. I mean, one of the days in the week, I pray for 10 hours. Not that accumulatively, it's no, I, I mean 10 hours in one 24 hour day. I should be able to stay in God's presence and pray for that long and make it my lifestyle so that it will be easy for the Holy Spirit to flow out of my vessel. Because I was tired being a normal person just around, adding to the problems. Today, I came to say that anyone that is willing to take up the challenge can become a mighty man and a mighty woman of God. This is about twenty, twenty something years that I've been praying like that. More than half of my life, I've lived it as an intercessor for my city, for my territory. If you visit my territory, you will know. You will see the impact of prayer. We have seen the power of prayer, what prayer can do. If you visit my city, you will see it live. Witches that have become choir people, people in the choir. All kinds of things that have been turned around. If you visit my city, you will see that not theoretically. You will see it practically. But that began to happen because I changed my prayer diet. And I began to press into God. So that the Holy Spirit can educate me about the things of heaven. About how heaven wins. How heaven conquers. How heaven dominates. Because I'm tired of the formulas that I've used that have produced no results. We are going to pray. And the prayer is simple. That God will help us to change our spiritual routine. If you are dry, it is traceable to your routine. Because there's nothing wrong with the Holy Ghost. There's everything wrong with me. I read in my Bible and I saw that Peter was walking on the streets and his shadow could heal the sick. And Peter doesn't have any special Holy Ghost. It is still the same Holy Ghost that I have, that Peter had. It means there's something wrong with my routine. And when I began to pray, and to pray long hours, long hours, long hours, long hours. If not that I, I, I was coming to preach here today, I would have been indoors today. And come out in the evening. I'm used to it. I've been doing it for years. For many years. And I still believe that I'm not doing enough. Because if what God wants to do will happen in my generation. Then I'm not doing enough. But I'm just telling you my own prayer life. So if you visit our team right now in Benue State, in Nigeria, prayer is unending. It's unending. So if you come into that space, your gift, your spiritual gifts 
will be so sharp because prayer is unending. The hand of God will be so powerful. The things that men call impossible will be possible. So what you call impossible is impossible because you are not praying. But when you start praying, there's going to be a change. I want us to go before God in a moment of time. This may not concern everybody. There might be one or two people in this place that what I'm saying is clicking with their spirit. And they are now able to interpret the beckon of the Lord that he has been advancing towards them to come deeper into the closet. For those people, that's why I came. Those people that will take up a challenge to extend their time of communion with the Lord. If anything happens of heaven, it will be because of them. If this land continues like this or if there's a break out of the Holy Ghost, it will be because people decided to go the extra mile. Not, to, not just to operate, you know, everybody, the atmosphere of church is good, I'm loved, everything is going well. I've, I've lived like that before. But if you are going to see God move, and witches will come publicly to renounce witchcraft, and people that are hooked on all kinds of drugs, we come out of the shackles of, of that kind of bondage and come to the Lord. If you are going to be such a person that influential people in society will visit you in the night and ask you to show them the way of the Lord, if you are going to be that kind of person, you can't be a normal believer just continuing the way we have continued and expect those results. No. The Holy Spirit in you has a mandate for dominion and i pray that your life will give him the opportunity to express that dimension of dominion that he has been sent from heaven with. we're going to pray we're going to pray i was in cameroon finished the crusade and we we're about to leave and the security was so tight And the woman cried. The security people just pushed her. She fell off somewhere. But I noticed she was with a child. She was holding a boy in her. So I, I felt compassion. And I pleaded with the security people to allow me to reach the woman. I didn't know that the child had died. And I touched him, prayed for him. And I left and entered the car. And while we were driving off, the child came back to life. Do you know, do you know what that did to the land? In terms of people accepting Jesus. Few days after I got back to my country, they called me and said, are you aware? That the mad woman of our city, I'm talk, when I say mad, there's no facility for mad people in Africa. So if someone is mad, the person is on the street, the person is naked. The mad woman of that city got healed. And came back into her right mind. Do you know what that did to, to the people? Do you know what it did to the people? Brothers and sisters, I came to tell us we are too ordinary to make, to bring about any change. We are too ordinary. To, to achieve that, we are too ordinary. We talk about revival. Uh, we, 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 we talk about God moving. Do you know what it means for God to move? Naomi, where's Naomi? Naomi, do you know what it means for God to move? If God moves, if there are, there are some dimensions of God's move that the hand of God will be on you for seven days and you, you will not have appetite to, to eat. Do you know what it means for God to move? 
let us not say what we, we don't know. God, he moves. Oh. Your life will change. That, this life, the way you want to live, you will lose it. Who? Now, <laughs> you know what it means? Appetite for food goes. Appetite for sex goes. You know what it means? For the hand of God to rest on you. And that's why you don't need to take this decision emotionally. You need to know what it is. God will need to move us far more than where we are in order for him to achieve what he wants to do to the land. I, have, I grew up in a place owned by witches, governed by witches. And that's how Cardiff is. Oh, you want, you want the hand of God to come through your life and challenge it? You will not be a normal man ever again. So if you want to be normal, don't pray some of the prayers you pray. You will not be a normal man again, ever in your life. The Holy Spirit will take you over. He, he, he will give your life a different meaning. And the Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. I've seen a little of it. And I told God, I don't want this. Because when the first glimpse of that glory appeared to me, I lost appetite for food for eight months. What I'm telling you are not jokes. I lost appetite for food for eight months. And I told him I don't want this. Now, let me be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you say. He will, he will assume that you mean it. And your life will never remain the same again. That's, we say this thing so that you can make up your mind and know what you want and not just be in the balance. It is during COVID that I now told him, I'm ready now. Indeed, I was not ready before. Listen to me. I've seen, I started seeing miracles 20 years ago. What I'm talking about is not miracles. There's an anointing you can carry and walk into a bank and people will start crying. You didn't say anything. People are just confessing their sins. I saw a little of it and I told him, I don't want this. Don't, this is not what I want. But you know, the Holy Ghost came down from heaven. What he came to do is not what you want. But I, most of us don't know. We like the church thing of saying, Ah, Holy Spirit, have your way. Do you know what that means? You know what it means? For instance, if he comes now and says, every pound that comes into your life for the next five years, give it to me. I will sustain it. How many people here will be willing to be that crazy? You, want, you don't want him to interrupt your life. So uh, what? <laughs> if, if he that comes from heaven inter comes in around your life and you give him half a chance, your life will change forever. You can't have this life back the, the way you are living now. You will never have it back. You will never have it back. It took me years to say, yes. Yes, if I die, I die. And everyone in the Bible that said, if I die, I die, never die.
Now, for me, there is nothing left to fear. The only joy I have is that he will show me his glory. This morning, we want to pray. And the pray I'm not giving you any prayer point. Based on what you understand and what you are willing to do, you can make the commitment that needs to be made to give God a chance, the Holy Spirit to, to manifest his dominion mandate over Cardiff. I was in the oil industry in my, in, in my country. That was the best job in my, in my country. And when I was to go, I was qualified to go for a very high, high position to write an exam. I, I, I don't fail exam. Write an exam, man. Then I'll be promoted. And then he came and said, resign. 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 I said, yes. So I put in my resignation. They rejected it. I waited for a few months and took it back. Two weeks to the exam, I took it. You want the Holy Ghost? <laughs> he, will, he will restructure your life so that your life will be according to the pattern of heaven. And what you call life today, you will never have it again. It's from one level of sacrifice to another level of sacrifice to another level of sacrifice. And sacrifice will become normal to you. But the glory that will flow through your life will create a pathway for the purposes of God. I told God I don't want to be an entertainer on the pulpit. I want to carry your glory. I saw a glimpse of it when darkness fell in that, in that village. It was a glimpse of it. And I've seen it in many other places since that time. The pathway is being created for the Lord. And we see that nothing can resist the authority of the Holy Ghost. If you can yield to him enough and consider him worthy to be obeyed. Then he can stretch himself to your vessel. And show the world that he is king. Will you let him? Will you let him this morning? I've counted the cost. In fact, I've, I thought about my life. That if I die now, what... Did I lose anything? So I've thought about that. So let him take over. I'm ready. He just told me that if I leave the United Kingdom, I should, I should look for a place and, and hide. He wants to visit me. So I'm trying to round up quickly because he has summoned me. He has deep things to discuss. Is there anyone here that is willing and he said, God, in my time, in my time, I want to be that vessel. That vessel that will give you the opportunity to invade, to bring darkness down. I want to be that vessel. Now, if that's what you're saying, can you talk to him? First of all, when you talk to him, first repent for not considering him authoritative enough to direct the affairs of your life. Then, you can ask him. Take me along with you. I will follow. I will walk with you. That which you want to do, I will be available to be used as an instrument. And if you are here this morning and you have not given your life to Christ, maybe you came with your friends, you came with your neighbors. The Lord is reaching out to you right now. Just in case you are willing from the depth of your heart to accept his call. Anywhere you are standing or sitting, put your right hand on your chest. And what you are saying is, I want to give you my life. I want to accept you into my life. If you have given your life to Christ before, don't, don't, don't bother. But if you came here and you have not given your life to Christ and you want to turn over your life to him, you can indicate by putting your right hand on your chest. And if your right hand is on your chest, raise your left hand so that the preacher can see you. Right hand on your chest, left hand raised so high. Thank you, sister. 
Come, can you come? Right hand on your chest, left hand up. And if your hand is up, you can come. Now, where you are standing, can you speak to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. Show me mercy. Wash me with your blood. Give me the grace to live for you from this day henceforth all the days of my life. In Jesus name. You may go back to your seat. So is there anybody here saying, Lord, you can have your way. It's not a risk to yield to you. And I want to yield to you. I want to be the reason why you visit Cardiff. I want to be the reason why your hand will come upon the land. I am willing to pay the price so that you can be enlarged in the city of Cardiff. Make those into your prayer points as you pray right now. Lord, what we are saying today is that you can count on me. I'm willing. I am ready. I'm ready. Listen to your voice. I'm ready to obey so that your dominion can flow through my life and heal the land. The land is patched by darkness, patched by wickedness, all kinds of things are taking place. But I'm willing to be that bridge and to give you an opportunity to quench the darkness of my city. Make that your prayer. Naomi, where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. Indeed, we want to arise. Because your spirit has waited for so long for one man, for one woman. That will understand the way of heaven, the demands of heaven. And yield enough. To draw him into the fight. We realize. What you are demanding from us. And we ask oh God. That you look upon us with mercy. That from this morning session. We are saying. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Hey, I see a woman in the congregation. And the Lord has visited you sometime about five years ago and began to tell you about what he wants to do in the United Kingdom. The move that he wants to bring. He began to give you some insight about five years ago. But unfortunately, you trivialize the things that God said. And right now, the Lord is no longer sharing those critical kingdom issues with you anymore because... You were not available. Oh woman, anywhere you are, you need to repent. Something was going on. It was deep. It was going on with you. It was going on. It was going on. But you did not know. It was very deep. God will not share everything with you at one time. When you begin to show evidence of yieldedness, then it begins to take you. It begins to take you. It begins to take you. And a time comes when it takes you all to himself. And you can say like Paul. That it's no longer I that lives. It's not what I wanted to do with my life. That I'm doing with my life right now. What I'm doing with my life is his will. I serve his will. Look kindly on us. 
as we come to the altar of sacrifice. Choose from among us. Women, men, that you can visit in the night. People that you can take their sleep from them so that they will stand before your presence. Choose from among us. And indeed be glorified through our lives. In the name of Jesus.